All right, imagine, imagine yourself in an exciting psychology experiment where you're seeing a bunch of video clips of colliding billiard balls. And suppose you have to answer the following question. Whether you think that the gray ball A caused the red ball B to go through the gate. And you see a clip like this. So how, how are you going to answer that question? So our, our counterfactual simulation model proposes that what you do, the, the first thing is pretty uncontroversial. You first look at what actually happened. So you see, oh, the two balls collided, and ball B went through the gate. The second thing is a little bit more controversial. So what we're saying is that what you're doing at the second stage is to say, to, to mentally simulate what you think would have happened if ball A hadn't been present in the scene. You can't really see this here, but you remove ball A mentally and then extrapolate what you think would have happened in that counterfactual world using your intuitive understanding of physics. If that's correct, then, then we would say A should be seen, the more of the cause, the more sure you are that it made a difference to the outcome. So the more certain you are that the out outcome in the counterfactual world was different from the one in the actual world, the more you should say that A caused it. If that is the case, then we should find very close correspondence between asking one group of participants to make counterfactual judgments. So we just ask them, what do you think would have happened? Would the red ball have gone through the gate if the, if the gray ball hadn't been present in the scene? And we can use those to predict the causal judgments of another group of participants. So that's exactly what we did. And in the experiment, we had different clips. And we varied what actually happened. So we varied whether B went through the gate, like in these top, top clips here, or whether it missed the gate. And we also varied what would have happened if ball A hadn't been present in the scene. So in some clips, it's clear that it would have missed. In some, it would have been close. And in some, B would have gone in even if the other ball hadn't been present in the scene. So in a, and as our model predicts, in those cases here, you're really sure that A made a difference to the outcome. If, B, if A hadn't been there, B would have missed. And accordingly, people's causal judgments are really high. In those ones here, you're unsure. The causal judgments are somewhat intermediate. And in this one, you think, well, it would have even gone in if A hadn't been present in the scene, so causal judgments are low. And the same holds essentially for prevention. You're going to say the more that A prevented B from going in, the more, the more sure you were that it would have gone in if A hadn't been present in the scene. Let's skip over here. So we had 18 clips in total in this experiment and find a very, very close correspondence between these counterfactual and causal judgments, correlation of 0.96. So you may say, OK, well, that's, that's somewhat impressive. It's nice to have a such, such a high correlation with a model that doesn't even have any, any free parameters, but how can you be sure that that's really what people are doing? And one way to figure out that that's really what people are doing is by doing eye tracking and seeing what people look at when they, when they watch the clips. So in the experiment, participants always saw a clip twice before they had to make their causal judgment. And here is the first time the participant watched the clip. And you can basically see the participant is just looking at what, what actually happened. So that, that first thing seems true and controversial. Now it's the second time. This is the second time the participant watches the exact same clip before they make their judgment. And you hopefully already saw, I'm just going to show you a replay because I like it so much, to see what, what he's trying to figure out. Right? He really tries to figure out what would have happened to ball B. Where would it go if ball A wasn't present in this scene to really figure out whether A was a difference maker in this situation. So that's the second thing. People do mentally simulate what would have happened if the candidate cause hadn't been present in the scene. So that, that was already it. That was our counterfactual simulation model. Showed it that it's quantitatively accurate, so we get a close correspondence between counterfactual and causal judgments. And we have process evidence that that's actually what people are doing. And we've also extended it to generalize to more complex situations, such as situations where there's more billiard balls involved and we have to apportion causality to the different balls.